Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna if you're new and welcome to another episode of Come Hang Out If You're Feeling Lonely, a series on my channel where I try various arts and crafts, some of which for the very first time, and also talk about whatever I want. So it's like we're casually hanging out. For this episode, I'm making my own jewelry, which I am super excited about as a jewelry lover. So let's get started. Okay, so these are my materials. Jump rings, lobster claw clasps, and some chain. And these are all gold filled so I can get them wet if I so please. The one thing that I am not super happy about <laughs> is that the gold kind of doesn't match. Like this one's lighter, this one's a little more, like a little pink. I, I honestly see a little bit pink. And then this is just like straight up yellow. But I guess the real stars of the show are these crystals that took forever to arrive from Lithuania. So I got two of these settings. As you can see, I already popped one crystal in here. I got two emerald ones and two of these ones. They came in sets of two, so I was just like, okay, fine. I'll get them like that. Unfortunately, these settings aren't gold filled because I didn't have that option on the website and I kind of just wanted to order everything together and I didn't know where to find gold filled settings. It was just too much work. I think these are gold plated, which are good enough, I guess. So yeah, the idea is just to like make a little choker, make a little pendant necklace out of these ones. These are super pretty. So yeah, I think a choker is about 14, 15 inches. So I'm just gonna guesstimate and cut out as much as, as much as I think I need. So I always thought that like handmade jewelry was really, really cool. But whenever someone said like handmade jewelry, what came to mind was like actually like welding the metal to like make a ring or whatever. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to do that? Like, I don't, I don't know how to like, I don't know how to craft jewelry. But what I didn't know was that a lot of the time when people say, you know, they hand make jewelry, it's usually just like buying all the supplies and then like assembling it. So that's what I'm doing today. And it's a lot, lot cheaper than buying a necklace. Like I was really, really surprised at how cheap this gold filled chain was. I literally bought a chain like this that was gold filled without a pendant for like 30 something dollars when I could have just gone on Etsy and like fucking <laughs> bought gold filled chain um, and like made my own but you know now I know 14 and that's 15 cut it with scissors there easy peasy lemon squeezy there you go so since I brought up jewelry shopping, I wanted to touch on um, shopping addiction real quick because I remember in the first episode of this series, I talked about my shopping addiction and how I was really, really struggling with compulsively shopping. And that was uh, around like January or February. I don't really remember when I posted that video, but honestly, like as of late, like just a little update, like my shopping has been really, really under control. Like I feel like my shopping addiction is just like really really bad around Black Friday. Um, it gets really really bad and then it is still bad through December because of all the Christmas discounts. Still bad through January because of all the New Year's discounts and then in February you got Valentine's Day. But once the discounts start slowing down, so do I, which is good I guess. So I remember last year in 2020, I stopped shopping around the beginning of February. I was satiated after I like spent a whole bunch of money in January. But this year, the shopping momentum that came from Black Friday kind of lasted like way longer than I thought it was gonna last. And it lasted through February and March even, I think. And I was just spending money like crazy. But then all of a sudden, like once I got my first paycheck, I was like, nope, I'm saving this. Like I have something to save for and I've been really good. And I've only been making a couple purchases here and there, but like nothing too crazy and like nothing that I have to feel really guilty over it, which feels good, honestly. I'm so, I was really tired of not having control over my shopping. So that's good news. And like also I think ever since I started working full time, I just have like a lot less time to spend on shopping websites. I used to spend so many hours in a day like just shopping, like it was, it was crazy. So I'm glad that I have something to take up eight hours of my day every day. I mean, I did have videos to make and stuff even when I wasn't working full time, but it's not like I had to work on them eight hours of every day. So definitely my shopping addiction isn't as bad, but who knows? Black Friday is gonna come again and maybe I'll go crazy then. But you know, I think as long as I have this job to keep me busy, I will be fine. I guess when you put it all together, you can't really see the difference in color, which is nice. So 
Very subtle. All right, so before I put the jump ring on the other end, I'm gonna go ahead and put one on the pendant. So yeah, as I was saying, less time to spend on shopping, but I also have less time to spend on everything else. <laughs> Eight hours in a day is a lot of freaking time. Oh man, I hope I bought the right size jump ring for this. Yeah, honestly, I am kind of struggling to maintain my regular posting schedule. And, you know, consistency is really important to me because, well, first of all, I've been being consistent on YouTube posting regularly for like, what, like two years now? And like, I can't just like randomly like stop, you know? Um, I don't want to stop randomly either. So, you know, maintaining my schedule is really important to me and I really like doing the makeup and mythology every Wednesday and I also really like having more personal videos like these on Saturday. So, you know, there's nothing there's nothing to there there's nothing that I want to sacrifice, you know. It works, but it's just been really really challenging. Like today, the day that I'm filming this video is a Saturday and so one of my videos went up today. And like the thing is, I originally had a different video planned and I was gonna film it on Monday, edit it on Tuesday, but then after I filmed it on Monday, I realized that I hated it. So then Tuesday I started writing the script and then Wednesday I had to like keep writing the script and like Thursday I had to do something else. I had to like fill out something for the DMV. And so that left me Friday to film the voiceover and like get halfway through editing before I, it was just like so late in the night that I decided I should just go to sleep. And then I woke up early this morning and I managed to finish it and um, I kind of hate cutting it so close. I'm usually such an organized person and I like to have things prepared in advance. Like if it were up to me, I would always have a two week buffer and like have that many videos ready. But it's just like not realistic because to get that two week buffer, I have to just like hustle really, really hard in like one short period of time. And like, I'm barely <laughs> maintaining my schedule as is. Oh my gosh, that scab looks so bad. Okay, the story behind this, I reached out for something and I like literally scraped <laughs> my skin off just because I reached for it so fast. I think I need to just like slow down. Like sometimes I need to like slow down and like breathe and like, build up some like zen because I am not zen. Like I am so neurotic, I'm so freaking neurotic. Oh man. But you know, I'm okay, I'm fine. I'm still managing even though barely so. It's just really hard and I'm trying to, you know, get that buffer instead of just like barely meeting the deadline every single week. Like I wanna have a buffer. So like in case something happens, I have a little more time, you know, instead of just freaking out trying to <laughs> get the video that's supposed to go up that day up last minute. I've never really been a homework last minute kind of girl, you know, like in elementary school, when we had a month for a book report, like imagine, I would always finish it like the very first day that we got that assignment. And then I'd be just be like done with it. And I'd be holding onto it for like a month, but you know, it's different. This is different because I have, I have, I was about to say I have school. Thank God I don't have school. <laughs> I have work and it's hard. Okay, so that's one. It's really cute. I'm gonna try it on. Wow, how cute is that? I love it. I made that. No, I just assembled it. Uh, these crystals, these are glass, so they were really, really cheap, which is freaking rad. So all together, all the crystals and the settings, that was only like $11, so I'm definitely gonna be buying more. This whole necklace costs less than $10, but when you buy it off like a retail website, they're obviously gonna mark it up a lot. So yeah, something like this, like gold filled, this would definitely cost like fucking like $60. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this emerald into this, well, emerald colored glass into <laughs> this setting right here. I kind of wanted to talk about how difficult it is to be an influencer. And like, honestly, I don't really like consider myself an influencer just because I don't have that many followers and I also don't like get a lot of brand deals and I also don't like post on Instagram every other day and I guess that is why it's so hard to be a, a freaking influencer I mean I just I'm just a girl who likes making YouTube videos and you know I don't do a lot like influencing influencing isn't really just like posting it's like aggressively promoting yourself and like, you know, taking on these brand deals and like every single moment, every single day you're like thinking about it and like, oh, it's just so much freaking work. Oh my gosh. 
I just want to post YouTube videos and I want to, you know, engage with my audience in the comments section. But I'm not trying to like make TikToks or like make Instagram reels or like fucking like post on a consistent schedule on Instagram. Like a consistent schedule on YouTube is different. But like you want me to post pictures of myself like at least two times a week and they have to be like perfect images like i'm so like what <laughs> who is gonna take my pictures like <laughs> oh i did it i did it oh gosh oh these would be cute as earrings but these aren't really earring settings yeah i was just saying that i i don't really like want to be an influencer like a lot of my friends are like oh have you ever like considered doing like streaming like gaming streaming or like a lot of people have asked me like um would you consider like trying to promote yourself on TikTok because, um, you know, it's really easy to blow up on TikTok or it's easier, I guess. You know, I've had people tell me like, you should make a Twitter because people grow on Twitter a lot and then you can like get the word out there about your channel and stuff. And like, even though I know it's like the right thing to do for my channel, it's not something that I want to do just because I feel that TikTok is a really toxic place. It's probably because um, a lot of the people on there are younger. So then a lot of people on there are really mean is what I'm trying to say. And like, they just, like there are a lot of hate comments, like based on what I've seen on like other people's TikToks and like the vile comments that like some people leave, like it's just like not something that I want to subject myself to. You know, there are hate comments on YouTube too, but like generally people are pretty nice on YouTube in my experience. Um, and then on Instagram, I don't have a lot of followers and like most of the people who follow me like know me in real life or like people who actually enjoy my videos. So like, I don't really get a lot of hate there. Like I don't get any hate on Instagram actually. But on TikTok, it's like, oh my God, you know, like people, people will like say, anything and everything to you and i just i'm i don't i don't want to deal with that you know like even though i could probably train myself to like have a thicker skin and like not care about like the rude comments that people are saying because like you know i'll be like making that bag or like trying to like promote myself or whatever like doing my thing but like oh god like i just feel like if if that comes at the price of like my mental health and like my well-being i just don't think that it's worth it and then also like twitter is such a super super toxic place i'm just not here for twitter i'm not here for twitter i'm not here for tiktok and it sucks because those apps are the places that you want to be if you want to like get big and stuff and i'm just like nope nope i'm good being on youtube and i'm good being on instagram and um i know that that hurts me not a lot of people will like know about my channel and stuff but i just don't think that it's worth it you know and i don't like <laughs> uh, gosh like it's so hard to make a tiktok too like it's really really time consuming and then like i can't even dance and like what am i gonna like make a tiktok of like i don't know like maybe i might change my mind and like actually make tiktok videos or like instagram reels or whatever but like it just doesn't appeal to me and that's just it i really feel like it's supposed to because <laughs> I am trying to, you know, make money off social media and like do this as a job and like I'm not even like willing to do like the bare minimum, <laughs> I guess, which is like have, having a Twitter and like a TikTok and stuff, but my mental health is more important to me than, you know, growing really really fast. And like if people like my YouTube videos, then they like my YouTube videos. But I don't I don't want to make a TikTok. I think I already rambled on enough. <laughs> yeah, the point is I hate TikTok and I hate Twitter and I don't want to be on there. And it's already really stressful trying to like plan, film, edit and upload like two videos a week and um i just don't have the energy to like also make tiktoks and like have a beautiful instagram feed and like pay a photographer to like help me you know take instagram pictures because all my friends suck at taking pictures <laughs> i love my friends but they suck they suck at taking pictures <laughs> So, you know, I'm at a loss. I'd have to take my own pictures and I'm not that great at it either. And it's just so competitive. Like everybody is doing like all this, like YouTube, like TikTok, Twitter, Instagram Reels. It's just like a lot, it's a lot. So it's definitely really hard to do all of those things. And like props to the people who actually like have the energy to do that <laughs> and the talent also, because it takes a lot to like make a, make a reel uh, or or TikTok. It's supposed to be easy, right? But like for some reason to me, it's really, really hard. But anyway, these are secured in their little settings. And aren't they so pretty? Oh my gosh. I just love the whole green and gold look. I love it. I love it. I'm always really like worried every time I cut chain that it's gonna like fly in directly into my eye and blind me. So yeah, as I was saying, you know, if people like my videos, then they can come watch my videos. I personally don't think 
that doing all that social media marketing is worth it really even if it hurts my views it sounds bad because it's just like i want to i want to do this but i don't really want to do this you know but i trust me like i do i i want this i want i want this youtube career you know i want to i want to have it but to me it's not worth sacrificing my mental health uh which will happen if i <laughs> you know am on tiktok and twitter you know like i really want to like minimize the amount of social media that i expose myself to which is like kind of funny when you think about it just because like i'm someone who posts youtube videos and like posts pictures on instagram sometimes seems a little hypocritical doesn't it i have mixed feelings about social media and i talked about this in my social media podcast episode it was like episode seven so i won't repeat myself too much here oh fuck i closed <laughs> i closed the little loops before i even um put on the thing so yeah, there we go. There's that. There's this necklace. Oh, you know, now I'm kind of concerned about how it's going to like stay upright. But I actually have some exciting news, which is that I got a car. I finally got a car. This is my first car. And there are a lot of people out there who, you know, get their first car at 16. And I really wanted to be one of those people, but I wasn't. And that was something that I was pretty upset about when I was 16. Um, but, you know, I, I just didn't get a car in college, even though I probably could have gotten like a used one because I didn't really need to, to get around. And I was like, it's just, you know, an expense that is not really necessary for me right now but like now that i'm out of college and i'm about to like transition back into in-person work i'm gonna need a car you know so yeah i'm really really fucking excited um my dad actually ended up giving me his old car he bought this car like seven years ago from his boss it's like really old it's like from 2000 <laughs> and it probably doesn't have that much time left but honestly i love this car and i've loved this car ever since i was 16 ever since I first laid eyes on it. It's a gorgeous car. It's gold. It has leather seats and um, polished wood panel details on the inside. And uh, it has like one of those um, ceiling roof windows. And I just love it. I just didn't know that it was an option for me to have. Just because like my parents never said anything. <laughs> and also like when I wanted to take it to college, like they said no. So I thought that it was out of the question. For me to have that car but you know he was like why don't you just take this car because it'll be easier than just like buying it from buying a new one from like a stranger or like not a new one but like buying a used one from a stranger and you don't even know if it's going to be like safe or legit or anything so i was like kind of surprised and um i'm really excited about it i am a little tiny bit disappointed in that i now won't get to know how to buy a used car from a stranger but you know i am probably going to find that out one day or maybe hopefully my next car will be a new one but honestly like i've never really been a car girl i mean i i just love this car even though it's yeah it's just really fucking old but <laughs> i couldn't be happier oh no so that didn't exactly turn out the way i wanted it to maybe i have to i, have to, I think i have to make it tighter i think i have to cut some length but that's cute isn't it you know it's really got to be flush or snug against the neck otherwise it'll just be droopy like this which is not that great of a look <laughs> so yeah i got a car and you know now i think that because i have the car living at home with my parents will be a lot more tolerable because now i kind of have like my own room <laughs> you know like i've never had my own room growing up so um now i finally have like a space to like go whenever i just want to be by myself which i didn't have before so i am really excited and in the past couple of weeks i've just kind of been like going in there and like cleaning up vacuuming like i'm so freaking excited to like make this car my own i went out there the other day to like check the odometer reading for the title transfer and um i was just like sitting there in the driver's seat for like unnecessarily long to the point where like my dad came out and he was like did you find the odometer reading are you fine are you okay and i was like yeah i'm just sitting here for fun um because you know i'm just i'm just really fucking excited to like finally have my own car i'm getting a trainer you guys i'm finally getting a trainer um and i can't wait to get whipped into fucking shape because i feel like i 
have not been taking care of myself physically lately because um, I haven't worked out in like a really long time just because I've been so stressed and like busy with like school and YouTube or not school, what the hell? <laughs> no! <laughs> I've been really busy with like work and YouTube so I haven't really had time to like work out and like that's not really like me because usually I make time to work out and like working out as a priority but I, I guess I've just been like telling myself like oh I'm gonna get back to the gym soon anyway so like it'll be fine if I just stop working out because I'm about to work out really really hard sometime soon which I think that logic is flawed somewhere <laughs> um all right so I did it it is so stinking cute except if I change the tension of my neck like if I'm like that tends to like move around a little bit oh that looks creepy <laughs> but yeah if i like adjust it in a certain way so that it's sitting a certain way i think it should be fine it is a choker choker like it feels like i'm slightly being choked just a little bit but i think that's super pretty and now i'm just gonna make you know two more necklaces i think i might buy more of these um little crystals and make some more. The chain is so sparkly too. Okay, so I just had the idea to like make one of those lariat, lariat chains. It's like a regular necklace and then it has like a long chain coming down and this could be the centerpiece of it. All right, all right. Okay, I think I can do this. Okay, cool. So out of everything, the chain was the most expensive. Um, I think it was like $20 for like five feet, which it honestly isn't bad. It's like maybe three necklaces. Ooh, one thing that I'm really, really excited about is the Friends reunion that is happening on HBO. I'm so flipping excited, like, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't, like, have high expectations. I don't know, because I don't know what it's going to be like. But, you know, I'm curious to see what they came up with. And, you know, Friends is my favorite show, so I'm just excited. I remember as a teen, I would always, like, make my own jewelry, except it would look a lot uglier than this. <laughs> I distinctly remember using solder wire <laughs> just because we didn't have any like craft wire so I like used solder wire to like wrap beads and stuff of course I didn't wear any of it but you know it was still fun to do I used to really like arts and crafts as a kid so this kind of feels like returning to my roots I really hate these open jump rings because they're just not secure, but like how else am I supposed to do it? Like, is there gold soldering wire? Like is, I don't know. Like do you weld them together? You don't weld something this small, right? I don't know. I should know, I'm an engineer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I got the Lariat necklace now. It is boob floss. I feel like this as a set is really nice. Like I could wear like a low cut dress. I can't believe I made this, you know, for, for cheap or relatively cheap. Anyway, definitely doesn't work with this top, but it's okay, it's not really intended to. Okay, so I just have this little one left over. Um, I'm probably just gonna keep it for something else. Maybe make somebody a necklace when I get more gold chain. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much all. Let's look at them in the sunlight. Yeah, it was unintentional, but this actually works as a set. So I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, so that is all for today's jewelry making video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.